can do. Amen. Hebrew chapter 12, verses 20 and 22. Uh, we begin a little inspirational teaching. This is a teaching uh, we started on Wednesday. We all need these teachings. It's got basic things, but we find that even Brother Bram, in uh, 1965, he was still teaching those, showing the church the position. Amen. And our children have to know when they go to school, young man, when you are there even by yourself, you know that you are not alone. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 12, verses 20. Let's see. Uh, we are gathered together. Amen. And it's called an assembly. How many believe when we are here, it's an assembly? It's a general assembly. But he said, oh, Brother Todd, I don't believe it. Look at all the MTC. It doesn't matter. It could be two or three. It will be an assembly. Amen. Amen. It's a holy assembly. Now, 20. For they could not endure which was commanded. Now, the title is God's Angelic and Guidance and Protection. Amen. God's angelic guidance and protection. Look, it's all throughout the scriptures. Everything from Genesis to Revelation. You'll find it. All right. For they could not endure the which was commanded. You see? Because when they were coming, they have been among the unbelievers for so many years. For 360, matter of fact, the Bible said 330 years with the Egyptians and they have forgotten who they were. So when the Lord told Moses, say, Moses, tell them, hallelujah, tell Pharaoh, let my people go and let them come to where? The mountain and do what? Worship me. So now they came, Mount Sinai. But when they came, they could not endure. Are you able to endure the presence of God? Now, for they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much as the beast could, the beast touch the mountain, it shall be stoned. You see, it was so holy. Amen. The assembly has to be holy. It was so holy that if a beast touched the presence in where God's people were, or the mountain where God was, and the angels was. Amen. Protection is there. That even a beast, do you know a beast? Can you take it the other way? Let's say a demon. A demon is a beast, right? Beast means power. They have power. <laughs> don't think they don't have power. Because they were angels. So if a, a beast touched the mountain, this is natural beast. Let's say a lion, a tiger, or anything, anyone go over there, mess up. It's stoned immediately. Like atomic bomb. Pooh. You are gone. That is why we have to be careful when we come in the presence of God. You can be stoned. Yes. But for the grace of God, we come. Anytime, Brother Bram said, anytime God's judgment comes, the blood comes in between. That is why we are still alive. That's why we have maybe somebody who fornicated himself or herself and so came and so oh, I came, everything was okay. Everything wasn't okay. Just the grace of God. For they could not endure the which was commanded. And if so much as beast touch the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through the dirt. Just like an arrow. You're gone. And that is why in the Old Testament, because the blood of Jesus was not there yet, Amen. The blood of the beast could not take away sin. It could only cover it. It could never make a worshiper perfect. So he stoned people. One time, 
That day, 3,000 people. That day, 3,000. Instead of getting the blessing, 3,000 were stoned, died. Let's go to the next. Let's see why. And so terrible was the sight. And we come here, the same thing. The only difference, what is the difference? Same thing is the blood. The atonement. Atonement means to atone. To stand in place, your place. So terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and what? Quick. The holy man. Moses was so sanctified, he was so anointed, and yet he was so shaken. Let's go to the next. But ye are come. You see? We are come. Amen. Amen. The terrible sight is no more. It's the sight of grace. Tell somebody, the sight of grace. Sometimes you come here, you are looking at your cell phone and you, you whisper here and there. You would have been stoned a long time. You would have been buried a long time. It's the grace of God. But ye, me and you, we are come unto Mount Zion. So we are still in Mount Zion. That's what I'm saying. The same thing. But the difference is grace. Grace, grace, grace. Some of us, even in the car coming to church, we quarrel before we get here. You quarrel with your wife. And you come and sit down like an angel, right? <laughs> they quarrel. Married people quarrel a lot in the car. And when they come, oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Everything is not all right. It's the blood of Jesus. By ye are come unto Mount Zion. You have to be happy, brother, sister. And unto the city of the living God. The heavenly Jerusalem. And to an innumerable company of what? See? Not just one. When we are come, do you know how many angels here? There are more than the people here. I'm telling you. Because everywhere God goes, he goes with his train. Chariots, angels. Remember one time, Elisha. Is it, uh, is it Elisha? Elisha. Shall we take our seat? We are discussing. We are, the time is gone, so we just do a lot of discussion and go. And when he saw the Syrian army, he said, Oh, master, alas, master, please, alas. Elisha said, What happened? Elisha could see beyond the situation. Look, may God help you to see. Oh, I want to be blind. I don't want to be, I don't want to have the gift of God. Come on. God ascended and he sent gift unto who? Men. Why you don't want to be a man? Because you are scared that God will speak to you. So when God ascended, he, he himself, he sent gift unto men so the church can continue to progress. So your family will not be destroyed. Because your adversary, the devil, is seeking whom he might what? Destroy or devour. Devour means to chop your meat. Finish you. But we are come. Look, in the presence of God. In the presence of what? Innumerable company of where? Angels. And you think angels are just maybe one million. Who told you? There are millions and millions and millions and millions. How many demons are in Atlanta alone? Tell me. Tell me how many demons. Only in Austin. Tell me. How much more? God's angels. Because Satan was able to get only a third. So God's number of angels outnumber his angels. And his chariot outnumber his chariot. Amen. You know God have chariots? Amen. So if God have chariots, then God have horses. Right. 
and Satan have horses. Um, is it all in the Bible? If you want to stay, we can stay and teach that. So you know the angel, the ministration of angel is still present. It's not a thing of the past. That is why we are here to show you. Then you can know your position. A preacher man will not lie to you. Though. Don't forget about the angels. Who told you? When the angels leave you, you see. Now, let's continue to read. One to go. But we are come unto Mount Zion. Come on, bring it back. And unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels. Let's go to the next one. To the general assembly. General assembly. Heavenly angels here. They are happy when the word is preached. Because the king of Cain is here. And if you cut that rub, oh, God is in his people. He's among his people. You have reverence, respect for him. You're dressing. You cannot come to church anyhow. Look, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn. So whose church is it? Firstborn. Who is the firstborn? Jesus Christ. That's his church. It's not Brother Tony's church. I'm just a worker like you. We are in the vain years. We are doing something for him. But as long as you have breath in you, he will use you. As long as you have a leg, he will use you. Which are written in heaven. And to God, the judge of all, and to the spirit, just men made perfect. Amen. Okay, let's look at a few scriptures. We haven't prayed. Let's, let's bow. Almighty God, we pray that you anoint this word for us, Lord, and your children will know their position. I bring every negative contrast to my feet. The power of God will move. In our heart, in Jesus' name, amen. I'm rushing through. This is 19 minutes, so it's going to be tough, uh, but let's see. Uh, Psalm 34, verse 7. I might not be able to touch the quotes, but maybe one or two. The angel of the Lord encamped ram. Isn't it a blessing? The angel of the Lord doesn't stand one place. Brother Corley. But whenever you are moving, he encamp around you. Amen. He flashes around you. Amen. You are protected. Oh, I'm scared. What are you scared of? So when the enemy shoots the arrow, pew, the angel will take it and throw it away. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But there is condition you have to serve him. But Abraham said you have to be a child of God. You cannot be a sinner and have an angel encamped around you. No. Maybe you have survived because somebody is praying for you. Amen. I wish I can say something. That is why the Bible said if somebody commits certain sin, not that person has to be what? Cast out. So we can deliver his soul to who? Satan. As soon as we cast you out, you see the next week, whether you survive, you'll be ripped off. Yes. The angel of the Lord and come run about them that fear him. And delivered them. Many are the affliction of the righteous. Many. It doesn't mean the devil will not try. Ah, who do you think you are? You this ordinary man here. Why are you so powerful? So Satan will try. 
But he will try a million times and fail a million times. If you stand in your position. We have to know who we are. We are in camp run about. Not by men. Not by the intellectual. By the power of God. When God sent an angel to Ze Zachariah, right? He said, I come, I stand in the presence of God and I am sent to you. Zachariah said, but I still don't believe it. I know, but my situation, I can't. Then the same angel, same angel went to Mary and Mary said, let it be unto me according to your word. So you can choose to accept or choose to reject. Peter's angel. Do you know Peter have an angel? If Peter have an angel, a man that walk on the sea, needed an angel protection. You say, Ekele, you say you don't need an angel? Come on. Paul has an angel. Paul needed an angel for protection. You say you don't need an angel? Tell me somebody here, raise up your hand, be sincere. I don't need an angel. I don't need angelic protection. Oh, nobody here. I thought that somebody can raise their hand. Oh, amen. Let's give the Lord a round of applause. He's wonderful. Amen and amen. Let's see Peter's angel. How many want to know Peter's angel? All right. Let's see Act chapter Act chapter 12 verses 15 and we come back to Act chapter 12 verses 1. Look. Then they said unto her, Thou art mad. You are crazy. You mean Peter? We know where he is. He has been bound but Peter was released by the angel. They kept the gates locked, the iron gate locked, doubly locked. Powerful locked. And they put chains on Peter's leg. Chains on his hand. And they put him. They lock him up and they went. And then they put soldiers to watch, to guard. Because they know Peter, this man is strange. The angel, Peter's angel can say, Peter, rise, rise. Come on. And immediately they change. <laughs> he was delivered. Hallelujah. He said he would deliver you. And Peter thought it was maybe a dream. And when he saw that the chains were all there, he said, my. He said, Peter, come. Then the angel blinded the soldiers. And the gate was open. Peter went in. He went with Peter. Peter saw his angel. They were going. Then all of a sudden he disappeared. The fact that you don't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Amen. If a woman is pregnant and you have a baby, do you see the baby? But do you know that you have a baby? Come on. The fact that I don't have money in my wallet doesn't mean I don't have money. Maybe I have money in the bank. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. There are some people they don't even carry money with them. They go anywhere, they sign the check. And it's still money. You must know what you have. You must know what you have. Peter know he had an angel because he walked with his angel. He see him all the time. Thou art mad, but she constantly affirmed that it was even so. The girl challenged them. The whole assembly said, come on, please. Peter is standing there. I knew, I knew Peter's voice. I heard it. He said, no, that is his angel. Even they know Peter's angel. And you don't know your angel. Look. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said it was an, it was what? His. 
is the Old Testament. False preachers, Old Testament. Who told you? This is New Testament. This is Peter. Apostle Peter. His angel, Brother Tony's angel, Brother Corley's angel, Sister Esther's angel, Echelet's angel, Danny's angel, Brother Tunde's angel, everybody angel. We just have to love him. He has, the Bible said, he has loaded us with what? Brother Kelly, if you hire a security officer for a week, how much you pay? Just give me the base. You get a very good security officer with the AK-47, guard you, take you back and forth. How much you going to pay? No, a week. When I call it what? 20,000? And then I better take that course. <laughs> you see? But you see what you are enjoying? Free. Cosy? Free. When he went to Togo, he was there. We enjoy. The Bible says we are loaded. Do you understand the meaning of loaded? Sister Rose. Let me tell you, your brother, you were crying a little bit because your brother, don't worry, your angel is there. Amen. Your angel, Sister Rose, angel. Amen. Little girls, you go to school, you have angels, okay? Amen. Do you know President, former President Trump, his son, the most popular, handsome boy, maybe in America? His name is Baron Trump. When he's going to school, you better be careful. He's being guarded, right? Yes. Because he's the president's son. Are we not better than president's son? Amen. Come on, brother, sister. Is he lack of... Are we not... I may not be the American president, but I know who my father is. He is the creator of the heaven and earth. And he has assigned an angel. Sister Moody, you remember that, right? When you called me that day. He said, Brother Tony, I cannot speak. I said, you're going to speak. You can speak today? Yeah. I said, keep believing. Keep believing. Brother Joseph's son is saying, we keep praying for him. And my brother Joseph, for the first time, two days in a row, two services, he couldn't make it. Then you know it's serious, yeah. His son could hardly even walk. But yesterday when I visited him, he's walking. Thank God. Amen. Oh, my, my, my. Can we continue a little bit? Scriptures. We're breaking the scriptures, you know. So let's start from verses 1. Let's see from verses 1. Oh, we don't have time. Okay, the verses 1 will take, it will take all the way to verses 11. You can read it yourself. All right. Brabram talk about God being the omnipotent. How many believe that? Now, the question I put is, are the angels omnipotent? Are the angels omnipresent? Are the angels omniscient? I'm going to start somewhere. Somebody help me. This is a mystery, but it's revealed. But Abraham said, only God is omnipotent. So if God is the only omnipotent, then that means Satan is not omnipotent. If Satan is omnipotent, then he will be omnipresent. If he's omnipresent, but Abraham said that he will be omniscient. Uh -huh. uh, you, if you want us to stay longer, we can stay. Because this is a subject itself. We need to know. Now, thank God that Satan is not omniscient. If Satan is omniscient, hey, 
Omniscient means know it all. Know what is in your mind. Satan, Brother Abraham says, Satan don't know. But if you talk too much and you tell your friend, hey, capture it. I got a job, I got a job. Wait and get a job first. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tomorrow you go to the jobs. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, you, we wanted to hire you, but you voiced it out too quick. Because Satan doesn't know until you voice it out. Is it brother? Did brother Bram say it? I'm just repeating him. Therefore, none of the angel is omniscient. They occupy space at a time. Omnipresent. God is everywhere. Amen. Satan is not omnipresent. But he has multitude and billions of angels working for him. And he travel as a thought. But God is everywhere. Amen. He occupy every space, brother. Amen. If any demon attack at any point in time, Satan demon, they could be here, they could be there, they could be here, but God is there. That is why I said before you call, Before you call, he'll do what? You already know what you're going to call. He know what is in your heart. He know what is in your mind. Whether you speak it out or whether you don't speak it out. But when you speak it out, it becomes what? Creation. That is why we have to speak it out. So it can create. Now, verses 11. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now, I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel, and he has delivered me out of the hand of Herod. Because all of them, they thought Peter was going to die too. And Peter's angel was there. And all the expectation of the people of the Jews. The expectation was to eliminate Peter. Satan and agent. His expectation is none of us will make it. None of us will make it in heaven. But let me tell you, as long as we stay with the message of the hour, as long as we keep this divine revelation, he said, I know the thoughts that I think about you is the thought of peace, not evil. God has no evil. The Bible said there is no evil in God. But God can allow. If you are disobedient, then he can allow Satan. He is the author of evil. Oh, amen. All right, we can continue. We have the scripture. Let's leave all of it. And let's take this court here. Please. Question and answers. Let's get it again for the sake of those who didn't come. Paragraph 51. Explain about each person's angel who abide with them. The next five minutes, I think we can finish the court quotation. Can you put the court again? Paragraph 51. Question and answers. 1965. Brother was teaching this. Explain about each, each person's angel who abide with them. Okay. Now, there is an angel. But this angel of the Lord that encamp above those that fear him, 
See. Okay. Come about those that fear them that see. Now, it isn't promised that sinners has angels. No. If you are a sinner, you don't have an angel. It's only the redeemed. You got to be redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord do what? Say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, I have an angel. It's only the redeemed has angels. Do you know that? The angel of the Lord and come about those that fear him. Now, angels are messengers. That is why we love our prophets. If you don't like your dispensational prophet, that's up to you. But we love our prophets. We don't worship our prophets. No. Prophets are messengers too. We respect them, but we don't worship them. Angels, we don't worship angels. But the angels themselves, they serve us. It's only the false prophets who worship angels. We don't worship angels. We worship Jesus. Now, the angels are messengers. I want you. I want you to notice it's so perfect. And I'll prove predestination to you. See, now, let's go fast. Now, when a little baby is formed under the mother's heart, you little children that understand this thing, see, the Lord gave you mother. She carried, she carried you under her heart because you are close to her heart. Amen. So we little children to God. We are children. We are sons and daughters of God. And our angels behold the face of God. Matthew chapter 18. We read it. Right? Our angels are beholding the face of God. Waiting for instruction all the time. What to do? They are standing in the presence of God. They are watching over you. Look. They travel like a thought. If you are in trouble, God will send one for you. You love the Lord. See, but the angels are for those that are redeemed. Don't forget it. Now, let's finish this. Redemption in completeness, 1954, paragraph 64. Oh, our God is great. Our God is great, brother. You love him? God is great. Joshua have an angel. How many remember Joshua have an angel? And sometimes, Brother Bram said, God himself come as an angel. The angel that came to Joshua was God himself. He was an angel. The angel that visited Abraham in chapter 18 was God himself. How many know that? The Elohim. Yes. Genesis chapter 18. And the Bible said there were three men. They were angels. But the one in the middle, he was the Lord. Elohim. When Abraham saw him coming, he went and bowed and he worshipped. And he said, my Lord. Amen. Paul had an angel, chapter 27, right? He said, the angel that I serve. How can you serve an angel? How can you worship an angel? But that angel was not an ordinary angel. Oh, tonight, may the Lord give us understanding of the word. Amen. Let's read chapter 27, 23, and we can close with this. Because if I pick another quote, then we might exceed our time. 27, 23, and we pray. I think you have got something. Who have got something tonight? All right. 
Act 27, 23. I want to finish with that. When God loves you, he will always send you an angel. Musicians will begin to come. For they stood by me. Wait and get the scripture first. Paul. In a critical moment, at the dying time, at the time that the soldiers, everybody was afraid. Paul was not afraid. Because his angel would keep coming, giving him instruction what to do. In this turbulent hour that we are living in, brother, don't be afraid of nothing. Because nothing will happen to us. Amen. For there stood by me this night. You see, this night. This night. You don't believe it? You don't believe the supernatural? Oh my, I don't want to say a lot. <laughs> Let me keep a lot. Now, for there stood by me this night the angel of God, whom I am, and whom I, whom I do what? Come on, read it. This is book of Acts, unless you don't believe the Acts. Do you know the whole Bible is about the book of Acts? Who can say amen? But Abraham said, those gods, that is where they guard. You know that. Because the book of Acts is the throne. You know that. You know that. That's the throne of God. That's the Holy Ghost. That's where the Holy Ghost came. The Holy Ghost, the throne. God's throne. And Abraham said, the four books, Matthew, Mark, Look and John, these four books, the four gospels, they guard what? The throne. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whom I serve, and whom, whom I am, and whom I serve. Let's go to the next. Saying, Fear not. If you know your angel, if you know the age and the visitation of the angel, you don't fear anything. Fear not, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God has given thee all them that sail with thee. That is what this message is for. Malachi 4, Revelation 10, 7, St. Luke 17, 30, hallelujah. Had begotten us is the word. It's God's word for the age. Had brought this gentle bride to where we are. Changing our lives. Getting us better. Here a little, there a little. Here a little, there a little. Getting everybody ready for the coming of the Lord. And if you believe him, say amen. amen. God bless you. Shall we stand?